Hi, I'm Dr. Nani Burns. Today I'm excited to show you how to craft a powerful first paragraph for your TOEFL Integrated Essay. It's crucial to nail this part as it needs to effectively summarize the lecture's response to the reading while providing context. Providing context is not necessary if it's widely known. However, for unfamiliar or complex situations, a concise explanation can help you earn extra points. Remember, one of the hallmarks of a strong essay is its ability to be understood even by someone who hasn't read the original source material, including the question itself. The difficult part is to be able to summarize the context in one sentence. The context might not be clear immediately, since there are often definitions of terms or lengthy introductions. Template-wise, there are two ways to introduce context. One is to summarize the context or situation presented in the reading in a single concise sentence. Then discuss the reading's approach to the situation, followed by the lecturer's reaction to the reading's position. The straightforward option offers clarity and directness in your essay. The other is to begin with both the reading and lecture structure to introduce the context. This structure can be challenging to write since you need to state exactly what the two are arguing about. I frequently observe many students employing this template incorrectly. They might say both the reading and the lecture are about Panamanian yellow frogs or both the reading and lecture discuss dinosaurs. This introduction lacks substance, since the question already indicates that both the reading and lecture recover the same topic. To effectively use this template, it's crucial to provide a specific point of contention, such as both the reading and lecture discuss how to protect the Panamanian yellow frogs from lethal fungal diseases, or both the reading and lecture are concerned with whether dinosaurs are endotherms animals that maintain a constant body temperature. We'll use both styles, and you can choose the one that you find easier for you. The main point is almost always found at the end of the first paragraph. So you should first read the end of the paragraph to pinpoint the reading's position. When you identify this, you can know which details to pay attention to and which details to skim over as you read a paragraph from the beginning. Let's take a look at this first paragraph of a reading passage as an example. The last sentence is the key point. Antlers themselves don't need a separate explanation as we all know what they are. However, you can add a modifying phrase at the end to provide a quick definition here are two possible first paragraphs for your own essay based on this example. 1. Antlers, extensions of the skull grown by the antelope family, become a focal point of discussion in both the reading and the lecture. The reading presents three functions of antlers, all of which are refuted by the professor in the lecture. 2. Both the reading and the lecture discuss the functions of antlers, which are extensions of the skull grown by the antelope family. However, the lecture challenges all three claims regarding the functions of antlers presented in the reading. Consider this paragraph. It provides a lot of information about the Roman Empire. However, since most people have heard of the Roman Empire, there's no need to provide context separately. If you want to incorporate the context, you can use a concise and essential description of the empire, such as the post-republican period of ancient Roman civilization, or the largest empire of the classical antiquity period. Like the previous example with the antlers, you can simply begin with the reading. The reading provides three reasons that explain how the Roman Empire became so powerful as to become the largest empire of the classical antiquity period. However, if you want to add more context for readers who might be less familiar, you can do so using a descriptive phrase as an appositive phrase like this. Scholars have long wondered about the source of the power of the Roman Empire the post-Republican period of ancient Roman civilization which was the largest empire of the classical antiquity period. 
The reading suggests several sources for this power. If you prefer the both structure, here's an example. Both the reading and the lecture discuss the sources of power of the Roman Empire. In response to the possible sources suggested by the reading, the professor offers a more nuanced view. Of course, some topics might be unfamiliar with the reader. In such cases, providing context becomes essential. Consider this passage. The key point lies in the final sentence, Lake Powell should not be drained. However, we need to provide some context about the lake, as it might be unfamiliar to some readers. The paragraph explains that Lake Powell is a man-made reservoir on the Colorado River formed by flooding Glen Canyon. This flooding also led to the creation of Glen Canyon National Recreation Area, making the lake a popular summer destination. You can choose a few essential details from these descriptions to provide context in various ways. 1. Using a straightforward approach. Lake Powell, a man-made reservoir on the Colorado River formed by flooding Glen Canyon, also led to the creation of a national recreation park and transformed the area into a popular summer destination. Based on this understanding of the lake's significance, the reading proposes that Lake Powell should not be drained for several other reasons. 2. Using a both structure. Both the reading and the lecture discuss the proposal to drain Lake Powell, a man-made reservoir on the Colorado River and a popular summer tourist destination. However, they offer opposing viewpoints. The reading argues against draining the lake, while the lecture supports it. Now let's move on to a more complex example. This first paragraph is quite lengthy. Skipping to the end reveals the main claim. A fishing ban for a Manhattan is not the best solution. But what fishing ban and why? Since most readers won't be familiar with Manhattan or the specific details of the fishing ban, you must provide context. Remember that the ban is not in place. It's proposed by an individual named Paul Greenberg. When summarizing, avoid explicitly stating the names of minor details like Paul Greenberg. Focusing on minor details is like a camera closing up on an extra in a scene, potentially confusing the audience. Instead, use general terms like someone, some people, or employ passive voice. Here are the summaries. Despite the proposal for a fishing ban on Manhattan, a forage fish not considered overfished, in specific areas, the reading argues against the ban for several reasons. Both the reading and the lecture examine a proposal to ban Manhattan fishing, a forage fish, in certain areas. However, they hold opposing viewpoints. The reading opposes the ban while the lecture advocates for it. This is another example that requires context. Example 1. Traditionally, dinosaurs weren't considered endotherms due to their categorization as reptiles. The reading rejects this traditional view, arguing that dinosaurs were unlike modern reptiles and were actually endotherms, animals that maintain a constant body temperature. Example 2. Both the reading and the lecture discuss whether dinosaurs were endotherms, animals that maintain a constant body temperature. While the reading argues they were, citing recent discoveries, the lecture refutes these arguments and reaffirms the traditional view that dinosaurs were not endotherms. This is the last example. These are two possible summaries. While the United Kingdom boasts a vast collection of ancient cultural artifacts, the reading text argues that archaeological studies of these objects face several current challenges. In contrast, the professor presents a more optimistic outlook on the subject. Both the reading and the lecture examine the current state of archaeological studies in the United Kingdom, home to a vast collection of ancient cultural artifacts. They disagree, as the reading expresses concerns about various challenges, while the professor offers a more optimistic perspective. That's all I have for today. Thank you for listening. This is Dr. Nani Burns.